Any corrections for the minutes? Nope, all good. All good? Anybody uh, want to? Well, I move that we accept them. Yay. Anybody second? Yes. Okay. Second. Yes for everything. Okay, everybody, yes or no? Approve or not? Approve. Okay, good. All right, I'll Yay. finalize and send off to the town clerk. Thank you, Christina. Oh, fantastic. Well, now we have on here public comment and Matt, <laughs> if you wanna throw in a few uh, thoughts to our committee before we start the rest of our agenda, that'd be great. Well, I mean, my comments are gonna be more around, I think one of the things that is a explicit agenda item. So hopefully yeah. if the chair will uh, allow me to participate to some degree uh, at that <laughs> section. I'll, I'll hold my comments. Okay. <laughs> yeah, we can participate. Yeah, this is a very open meeting. I, I only threw that in because uh, sometimes I hate when I go to a meeting to wait till the very end to make a comment. And, and uh, yeah, uh, it's Let's, nice. It's yeah. Nice thing. So the next the next item on the agenda is the updated committee charge, which I think I sent to everybody. I hope you all got it. Yep. Um, and maybe let's go through there if there's any concerns or questions about that. Oh, there's Stan. Hi, Stan. Oh, he's still connected. You're still muted and, and uh, no video, Stan. Yeah. Excellent. Let's see. Um, yeah, pull it up and then we can go section by section. Sounds good. But do you want me to put it on the screen? Yes, please. Okay, that's a good thought. Yeah. I'll get my, uh... yeah, it's kind of marked up. Let's see. I thought, oh, I thought um, while, while you're pulling it, good. Yes. while you're pulling it up, um, I thought Steve's comment about the um, neonic bill was pertinent. Um, yes. I mean, how does that, and maybe this is a question for Matt too, um, it would be good, helpful to see the, the wording again, but given the, the new restrictions on usage of neonicotinoids in the state, I wonder if that change, it would change the charter at all. Um, some, some things might be tweaked because of that. And I, and Mark, last time, I had noted that we should um, make a note of that new state law and so, and maybe add add it as an attachment to the charter. Yes, yeah. Um, and I, I tried to find it on whatever my last day of vacation was. Um, yeah. And I couldn't find, I'm sure I just didn't know what I was, how to do it, but. For sure. Yeah, it's um. Yeah, we can get into that. I, I went to a few hearings about that year, a few years ago, the run up for this. Um, I don't. Let me see now. I'm trying to. Who is hosting? I I was. I should be hosting because I went, but I wasn't first on. But in order for me to share a screen, the host has to enable participant screen sharing, which we normally do anyway. Uh, maybe. Um, Lois, were you on before me? You're muted. Let's see. You're muted. You're muted? Lois is muted. I don't know. Go. I thought you were on before me, but I don't um, know how to do host stuff. Check, uh, check see down. If, see if you can share. Is I it more? Where do I look? More? Uh, I would, that's a good question. Yes, but I think more. Or are you on an iPad or a, a PC? iPad. Uh, Enter host. To I, the I see that I have the I see that I have the share content thing, but I don't. Okay. Not, I it's hard for me to share from the iPad. Let me let me see if I can. Okay. Pull it up. Yep. Yeah, you could you could share if you've got a copy of the you've got the same thing I've got. So. Yeah, it might be wonky with the. Um, uh, iPad. Yeah with the iPad, but let me see if I can make this work. Okay. Uh, oh, it says only the host can share in this meeting. Okay. We've shared before, so I don't know. Matt, are you the host because you're uh, selectman? 
No, no. I don't it's, think so. It's no. the town. It's the, whoever share. runs the town Zoom account. Host is disabled uh, participant yeah. sharing. Site. Let's see. I mean, the only possibility left, I think, is that Lois is the host and that she could potentially either. It says sign in as host. host. There, it, it, oh, it does say it, sign it, in as host. Yeah, now, Lois, Lois, you should have the host key to claim host. I know how to do nothing other than turn my iPad on. Well, do you have um thing. on top of your iPad? Do you have there's oh, the hey. mute button and then stop video and then I yeah. have a green button that says you share know content. Oh yeah, I see the green button. Try share that one. Button. Share screen. Yeah. Only the host can share at this meeting. Oh okay. boy. So Wait, but you know what? If I leave, that'll that'll solve that, and then I can come I back. Right? Need to. I don't no, think just so. a sec. No, I need a host key. If anybody uh, knows the host key, we can do it. Yeah, it says enter host key to claim host. Exactly, but we need to know the key. Uh, what? Uh, no. Okay, so how about if somebody um, just holds it up to their camera? That's uh, not going to work. Well, we, um, does everybody have it on their computers and we can just look? Yeah, we can, we can yeah just I look think that might be that the, way. That's Let's a, do that. I think that's easiest. Beside the, I think the it'll be clearer than sharing it. Yeah. Yeah, but turned it off. There, there was the, so I've got the first paragraph was, uh, does pe do people have it at the background? Yes. Okay. I had nothing with the first paragraph. Anyone else? Uh, no, sorry, I'm still trying to open it here. Yeah, no problem. Um, well, okay, I have a question. Sure, sure. And I think it'll start coming out as we go along is, who yeah. is our audience? Who are we aimed at speaking to? Well, we're a town, we're a town uh, committee, so we are, we are speaking to the town. Right. But beekeep is an environmentalist. If it's the whole town, beekeep is an environmentalist. Sound like kind of more professionals than, you know, the people who mow, mow their own lawns or have the, have the, um, you know, what do you call it? Groundskeepers, landscapers do their lawns. And I mean, as we, as we go along, it's th that seems to be no, we, I I think our I think we are responsible to the entire um, conquered population. Yeah, I mean so, this is just uh, the background section, so it's just giving context. It's not. I think we right. should focus on the purpose. Right. The, but the, the, but basically, the people read the first line. Sure. Yeah. Well, I, one of the things I thought was that actually you could even just start with the purpose um good because yeah. uh, for the sake of the charge remember you know the objective of a charge is to state what the uh, committee is supposed to be doing right yeah. and so yep. the the part at the beginning that kind of talks about you know views on neonicotinoids um isn't really uh key to establishing the charge itself i i'm all for that i i I have always felt that this uh, background section kind of meandered. And well, it, does, it has like three different, totally different perspectives <laughs> in three different paragraphs. So it, it was yeah. hard to understand where the committee yeah. headed uh, yes. when you read that. <clears throat> okay, let's 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 put that on the table that maybe we take this section out. Okay. Start with purpose. I, I second that yeah. motion. Yeah, okay. right. sounds good. And let's right. vote for it. Okay, take it's that gone. Take that right. section out. Yep. I'll delete it on my copy. Okay. Okay, so it says B purpose, but we'll consider that to be A. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Ooh. Matt, you're really helping us here. Let's see. Well, but I, I have a much bigger uh, <laughs> on on purpose. So, <laughs> okay. <laughs> so here's the thing is, I mean, I feel like, um, you know, the communications 
purpose is very important um, and that the public really needs this. Mm -hmm. However, you know, when I look at, a, at, you know, the scope is communications, I just think, well, this doesn't align with what we most often have for town boards and committees. And so, you know, for a town board or committee, we are typically either developing a bylaw as, you know, was at the beginning of, of this committee, um, mm -hmm. or we are having some regulatory purpose, right, you know, that we're, we're managing the use of pesticides, let's say, on town lands or something like this. But, you know, when it comes to something like this of educating the public, I feel like being a town border committee is kind of a burden uh, because you have open meeting law, you have these quorum requirements, mm -hmm. you're just in the scope of the town when this is a regional and maybe even global issue that, mm -hmm. you know, coordinating with other groups is, is more complex. When I look at the resources that over the last few weeks that different committee members have been pointing out, you know, the, the, the groups are inevitably not town entities right? They are, maybe they are, you know, located in a town and identified with a town, but they are, you know, citizen groups. And, you know, we have any number of very mm -hmm. effective citizen groups in town, you know, CORE and the League of Women Voters and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the I just, yeah, the, yeah, the Green Thumbs, uh, you know, and I just feel like um, it, it may be more effective mm -hmm. uh, to have this this group move forward, but perhaps not as a town board or committee. Mm -hmm. I totally agree. So that's I've, I've been working trying oh. to work at making Lexington Living Landscapes is has members of the town on their on their um, committee, but they're not a town committee. Yeah. So I mean, that if you're a different group, you could you could raise money. I mean, you have an associated nonprofit. There's so many possibilities that aren't really possibilities if you're a town board or committee. So I, I just feel like it, when this committee started, you know, there was an objective to create a bylaw. And indeed, you know, bylaw passed a town meeting. And, um, you know, there's been work since then on on you know, iterations of that. But then now, of course, we have the state legislation. And I think that it, it is appropriate that the uh, mission of the group evolve um, and that it's a good mission that's been defined here. But I don't think that it necessarily needs to be a, a town entity. So. Yeah, I think I think I, that's a good point. Go ahead, Mark. Well, the only thing I think about for the town committee that might help us is one of the things that would be very helpful to do is collect information in town about uh, pesticide applications. And uh, and and I, I was talking to one of the farmers about it. He said, you know, if you were a town committee, then you could maybe come to a an entity, a farm or a golf course or whatever, and just say, you know, we, we would like you to tell us about the herbicides and pesticides you're putting down on your land because they affect pollinators. But to Matt's point, couldn't natural resources or the, or health, the department, health department might have more gravitas department. than us? Well, and, and perhaps what we should do, you know, is yep. see if we can negotiate, you know, where that could take place and just get a commitment for that to happen. And then that would kind of give you the background info you need you know yeah okay. I'd, I'd like to jump in here and make a comment um i i would be amenable to to having us not be a town committee mm -hmm. but i do the first thing that comes to mind is that we might not have the standing to um make suggestions and the idea that we could get the nrc to do it is could be a very 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 heavy lift yeah, uh, I I've been working. Ag, let, I think ag committee or health department might be easier. You, you might think that, and I might mm -hmm. disagree. Um, yeah. I've been working with a group for about a year now on uh, the the idea of, the idea of a deer management plan, which should be extremely obvious to the N NR NRC, and we're only now just beginning to get traction. So I have in no way 
uh, would think that we could get traction. And the health department, when I talked to them about some other thing a while ago, they seemed to be rather, rather well, first of all, they were changing their director. And then I think they're so overburdened with COVID stuff that they don't always have time. The, the, the thing that immediately comes to my mind with this committee is um, people are always using things like Mosquito Joe to um, organically take care of mosquitoes and ticks in their yard. And I don't, um, I don't know that the town has any way to address that, but if we as a bunch of um, do-gooder, you know, organization without any town standing wanted to make a comment about that, I think we'd have even less standing than if we were a town committee. So that's my two cents. Um, I, I don't want to stand in the way. It, it seems perfectly reasonable to not be a town committee. I'm just saying it's not at all a clear yeah. way forward. I, so I, I think what like it, to add to that too. I, I agree with you, Janet. Um, I thought, thought a lot about the NRC. Um, and the problem, I think, the NRC is so focused on dealing with developers and wetland laws and things like that, that this tends to slip through the cracks. Oh, no, they're a commission. Just, they have legal standing. They have notices yeah. of intent, yeah. you know, permits and all that stuff. And every time you talk to Delia, she, she says her plate is full. So. Yes. And in fact, that's how we got involved with Harrington Park, uh, our, 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 our committee earlier. Uh, we got it. We were Tracy Dunn got a hold of us and said, "Gee, I'd like to do a pollinator garden." And Delia was booked up, and so um, oh, what was it? Oh, forget. Anyway, a member of our committee got together with uh, with Tracy, and we the committee supported Tracy in the beginnings of the Harrington Park pollinator garden. And and uh, I think the the other thing that I'm coming up with is there's a complex relationship between endangered pollinators we're, we're after diversity matt that's our goal here not so much honeybees and uh there's a there's a, a tight relationship between endangered species of plants and endangered species of pollinators and so this is a it's it's an ecological issue uh that uh, and in fact, I think for what we're trying to accomplish here, we probably should be getting some funding. You know, we're, we've been talking a little bit about uh, some sort of a budget for our committee, not a giant one, but something that would allow us to do more effective work. Uh, that, um, and I think the other thing that happened is that one time uh, Sig Ruse and I went into MDAR, Massachusetts Department of Agriculture, to pick up pesticide reports. This was before mm -hmm. COVID hit. And I think being a town committee gave us some standing with MDAR. Uh, Massachusetts Department of Agriculture. And so I, I, I think that one question I've had is that um, the open meeting law, uh, I think its application to us is, is, is kind of interesting because I think most of our deliberations hardly have anything to do with something financial unless we get deliberating about some regulation, which we haven't been doing at all, particularly. Well, and indeed, that's, yeah, that's why there is open meeting law is that Anything yeah. is going to affect people's rights or their budgets, you know, it needs to be discussed in public. But, you know, if you're a committee that doesn't address those kinds of issues, then it comes back to, well, you know, is it a, is it necessarily going to be subject to that? And therefore, is it necessarily a town board or committee? So yeah. my question, I don't understand. Um, I didn't grow up in Massachusetts, so I don't know how committees work. But I think well to be under the sustainability group um, as a subgroup. I mean, I know, I mean, I'm on the trails um, committee under and sources, and maybe that's where we, we belong. I don't know, but I do think we're sort of hanging out, not connected with our partners. Uh, mm -hmm. you like know, to... there, Hayward Meadow has a committee that Celia attends that's just a meadow at the end of my street. Um, it's not even, you know, broader topic like we're addressing. Yeah. Um, so I don't understand yeah, I... how how somebody becomes a committee versus. I know for Lexington for sure they felt that they they had they could pull everybody together that's concerned about native plants and uh, pesticides. I know Lincoln the their conservation group is is the one that really part, 
you know, focuses it. But they've got so much more than our conservation natural resources group. They have they have like five people where poor Delia has, you know, herself and Will and a secretary and maybe now an assistant, but that's hardly anything. Yeah, I would I would like to suggest that perhaps the the NRC could get could be augmented in some way and charged with the issue of biodiversity collapse or a you know crisis. The the Deer Group I've been working with has finally gotten the attention of Delia. We'll be meeting with her later this month, and um, there's a consensus that. We have not only a problem with pollinators, we it's they're all interrelated. The pollinators yeah. um, are not there partly because the plants they depend on are not there, which is partly because we have an overpopulation of deer. And there's just this, it, there's a lot of ecological imbalance due to basically the interference of people. And whether it's our pesticides or, you know, we drove out the predators of the deer, whatever. There, there's a whole lot of ecological imbalance. Biodiversity collapse is, is, is becoming evident. It's very serious. It's not exactly like climate change or you yeah. know, the, the carbon issues, but it's somewhat related. And I think we're beginning to wake up to the idea that we need to pay attention to this. It would not be, yeah. to me, out of bounds for Concord to, to you know, take this on and uh, declare that the NRC, I don't know, God knows you'd have to get some money or something to, to make it part of their charge. As Isabel said, they don't have enough staff as it is. Yeah, it's almost like you, you would like to uh, charter a biodiversity committee. Yep. Yep. I mean, it's interesting that when you look at the list of, you know, our town boards and committees, there isn't really anything focused specifically on that, right? Right. Um, the, as you say, the NRC is more of a regulatory body. It's not really a policy body. And, um, or, you know, so, but I, I'm still not sure, you know, whether, again, usually you form a town border committee around, you've got an initiative that's going to lead to either, you know, some, the, the town spending money on something or the regulating something well the uh the article that we passed you know uh limiting the town from uh, allowing neonicotinoid use on new properties that was uh 2020 right or right 21 um <clears throat> that was a that was that initially came up in our committee right uh, and then uh covid hit and and the moderator said, gee, you know, we'd, we want to keep town meeting short. Can you hold off on your article? And beside, there were no new leases coming up. So we said, OK. At the time we came up with that article, one of the arguments from the NRC, which I liked, which, uh, which we didn't put in the article, was there should be a sunset clause on existing town leases that allow neonics used on the land. Uh, and uh, that was asked one of the people on the on the NRC asked about that. Um, I could send around my notes from that meeting. Yeah. But I think what I guess I, I'm thinking is that uh, that we've just scratched the surface on what I think would be reasonable things for the town to do to help biodiversity in the case of pollinators. Yep. And, and like we died, I think it'd be very good for us to be working with the tree department to say, and the tree department has some of this, that the plants that we would put in to replace plants we're taking out would be native plants and that they would be pollinator as much as possible pollinator or wildlife friendly. And I uh, think, but I think Delia does that. Well, that's good. But I know down by the, you know, at least a few years ago, down by the Concord Depot was Bradford pears all over the place on town land. And yeah, those, that's bad. yeah, that's no good. And I think, uh, I know the town, Parks Department said they don't use neonics on the sod, but we'd like to, we need to do work with the, um, and this is, gets back to Steve's comment. Uh, he's right, a, a big chunk of neonics are used not on farms, you know, no. farms, come up, farms come up, I think because probably because in the Midwest, that's almost all the, ag, all the land in a rural Midwest is farmland. 
But in our town, um, we've got two golf courses, one of which uses nine times as much neonics per unit area as the other one. And uh, the one that's using them is using them at a rate four times as high as probably Steve's rate, at least for, say, sweet corn. So, uh, you know, 160 acres at four times is the same as a square mile of, of sweet corn at the, uh, with using coated seed. So it's, uh, I, I feel like, I feel like if we disappeared as a committee, uh, we might. Well, we would have to transition into something else. And that, that's what I've been trying to figure out is how do we transition into something else? You yeah, know, I how guess do you pull together all of the the component the the parties that are interested in this because there yeah. are a lot of parties that are beginning to begin beginning to be very interested. Yeah. Well, like one. Yeah, I think I'll just yeah. add to what Isabel was is saying that oh. I mean I've been thinking about this too because there are you know other towns have pretty big efforts on this and we're just scratching the surface and trying to you know use whatever they're already doing and so they're mm -hmm. putting a lot more resources in it and we don't have you know as this committee we have zero resources so we have to well we're not you know, coordinating find, with with the existing yeah. people and right i mean my I, i've been excited because i'm doing this workshop um on uh planting with you know native seeds and mm -hmm. the live has just stepped forward to totally support it a hundred percent you know, and that's what's happened in Lexington. I think, you know, the Cary Library offers all of their videos and things. So we're, we're just, I know I'm just beginning to create a network, but it's its me, um, it, it hasn't been this group. And maybe we as a group can, I don't know. I don't, I hear you, Matt, very much. That we we're- It's like it's a bigger, ta a, a bigger effort and task that's necessary than we as a small unfunded group can hmm. adequately tackle. Well, and well you mentioned depends that on there our are other communities with more resources, but I don't think any of them has a town border committee that's focused on pollinators, right? Mm -hmm. They're, they've gotten those resources through other entities. They have pulled together the local civic group. Yeah, and see, and I created a civic why group. I just think, oh, well, that model might be a better model. Mm -hmm. It's, that's certainly well worth considering. Yeah, I don't know how we tap into that. Oh, well, I would look at the how the other communities did. Um, yeah, I've asked. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's like one person that totally gets it going. And I mean, that's where I've been trying to just, you know, slowly get my name out there and create a, a resource. Um, I do know that like in Lincoln, uh, there's a subgroup is out front who's now calls themselves the Lincoln Common Ground and they're working on uh, carbon sequestration. I have trouble with that word, um, native plants. Um, you know, they, they have taken on, but it's like one person who's really honchoed getting that going. Yeah. And they happen to have an expert who's on maternity leave. And I, and I know today um, I'm on, on another committee, uh, Matt, which is the a regional committee for pollinators uh, through Sudbury Valley trustees. Mm -hmm. and, and we're, they're coordinating a plant sale, for example, uh, coming up this spring. And uh, we've been looking at ways to map uh, pollinator gardens in, in Concord and, and, and for that matter, in the whole Suasco watershed. Yeah, well, they have a great mapping application, right? That they've done in the past that yeah. a critical habitat. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's, there's a group uh, called- so They can create a layer. You know, I, I assume that would be a pollinator specific layer on that app. The, yeah, there is. The uh, inside of a group called Sustainable Belmont is this uh, Charles, well, B Isabel put me onto this. Uh, the Charles, what is it, Charles River and, and uh, Mystic, Mystic River? Mystic and Charles uh, Watershed. Watershed, yeah. yeah. And so I, I met today uh, with the woman that, that runs that map. 
uh, to understand what she's been because it, it's quite well done i think it's uh, i particularly like the fact that people can put their own information into it um, but she's basically working on her own uh, and she was very interested in sharing with us uh i guess And as I look at the region, you know, as I look at, for example, the work of the Swasco, there's 36 communities. And of the 36 communities, there's like Littleton, us, Lincoln, uh, Southboro, um, less than half, Northboro. I'm not even sure Northboro's in the watershed, actually. But um, it is. It is? Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, that's Gary. And, but anyway, there's a, and Maynard is in it, uh, they're active in it. Sudbury's, I haven't seen particularly much going on from Sudbury. Uh, but but it, it's watered down because there's too many communi communities. And like, I mean, Lexington and Lincoln have their own water plant sale. You know, it, they do it the same way, but they, but they do it through the conservation or the land trust. Yeah. And when I've, I mean, land trust, I've, you know, they have a new president or whatever she's called, Jane. Um, but their, their focus is not the same as, um, they're getting into the focus. I think what, Matt, I think the thing is, is that Concord is just in the baby stage of wakening up to the need for this. Mm -hmm. yeah. And to, for, I know that when I did my workshop at, in Lincoln with the land, two land trusts, Lincoln and Concord, everybody introduced themselves with all their credentials. And I stood up, I didn't think about myself representing this group. I just said, I'm a citizen and everybody sort of laughed, but that's what I am. Mm -hmm. um, I don't, you know, and I think there is something to be said about having credentials. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I, I, I sort of feel that way too. That was Chip, Chip's uh, take on it way back before we did this. Uh, the indianesis of the committee came out of that um, town meeting, I think it was in 2016, where uh, uh, it was Article 48, I think, and uh, that there was a select board at the time said that they felt the neonic issue was complex enough, that the, that the pollinator health issue was complex enough that they felt they needed to form a committee to address it. Um, and I feel for myself, I mean, I've been on the whole thing the whole time. Uh, and I, I know it's been gee, you know, almost a decade, uh, more than five years. And I feel like, uh, I mean, my background's in science. And I guess I would say we've, we're scratching the surface of this problem. Uh, for well, example, what if, we, what if we made the purpose to, we met like a, a two year plan to work ourselves out of being a committee with the goal of, you know, sort of steps to creating a town civic coordinated effort. Or maybe That's even nice. a one, I, I, I think one year is a little fast, but you know, something like that. What do you think, Matt? Well, that's kind of an unusual charge, uh, you know, <laughs> that's all, uh, you know, a charge to kind of put yourself into a, a different entity. Um, no, I, I actually don't think that it, it, it's necessary to be a town board committee while you're doing that. Yeah, uh, I, I do. I am interested in this sort of notion of um, biodiversity is perhaps a reframing um, but then I think it's still at the very uh, beginning of understanding, well, what would, again, be the town role in that? Um, in, and I believe that there might be. Uh, it's just that it's too early to kind of say what it would be. Well, Matt, I, I would like to offer that a few years ago, we had no idea that we'd have a sustainability director. Right. And now there's lots of, of stuff for that person to do. The whole biodiversity crisis issue is just becoming, people are just becoming aware of it. Yeah. So, and defining it. One of the things I would like to see <clears throat> is the League of Women Voters of Massachusetts to declare a climate crisis, I mean, a um, biodiversity crisis. They declared a climate crisis a few years ago, and that's opened the doors for them doing a lot of things. Mm -hmm. But um, 
pe people who apply pesticides will pay absolutely no attention to folks like us having the town behind them with a little bit of um i don't know a little bit more bite a little bit more power yeah. would well, be I mean, useful. It did have a regulatory authority but i you know i just don't there isn't one right now you know Oh, uh, I wonder. I wonder if one of the regulations that we might come up with, for example, is to say to people in the town, given the state law change on neonics, for example, uh, you can't buy neonics over the counter. Uh, so we'd, we'd say to the licensed applicators, when you're in the town of Concord, when you apply neonics, uh, please, you need to report that to uh, this committee. And so we well, can if, if there is a reporting out. requirement. I don't know if the state legislation would have it. Um, well, I know that Steve told us that the farmers, the farms need to report what fields they're using neonics on. I don't, but that's just agriculture use. I don't know how that yeah. reporting extends. And maybe he does know, but for instance, the um uh, golf courses. I don't know how, you know, what their requirement is for reporting. Well, I've seen, I have the golf course reports for Neshotic and, and, and the Concord Gar Golf Club, and they report their annual uh, usage. Um, and Neshotic's using basically uh, what the package says to use on almost every square foot of their property to kill uh, that's going into the wetlands so yes and it's going into that's the just totally i mean they're all wetlands there yeah yeah and and uh and concord garden club accomplishes the same thing with one ninth the amount of of neonics so i think one of the things that i think it would be nice to do as a committee uh and as a town committee maybe this is more helpful as we get these two entities together and say is there a way we could um you know reduce the amount that's being used at Nashotic? Uh, just as, a, as an example, I think we could make some real progress there. Uh, another example might be that uh, professional applicators, when, when Sig and I looked at the pesticide reports that MDAR collects from uh, licensed applicators, they don't say which properties they put it on. They just say, we used you know so many pounds of this material uh, over the course, either it was either the course of a year or a month. I think it's over the course of a year. So we really have no idea where that stuff's going down. And uh, and Steve's right, this, that stuff can be pretty concentrated uh, and, and therefore spread. Um, another concern I've got for the Board of Health has to do with this pump that's appeared in, uh, in Bag, what is it, Bigelow Field, you know, the Souter land on, Su on Sudbury Road, just south of Route 2. There's a pump house there. No, that's uh, Steve's. I know, and it's going to be used to irrigate that cornfield, yeah. which is which is uh, chemically treated, and so they're drawing water out of the aquifer that is also used by the town water supply, and putting it onto the soil, where we know that about ninety five percent of the pesticide leaches down into the groundwater, <laughs> and uh, it, therefore I think it's going to have an effect on the water quality of that town well. Uh, and so I think as a committee, I think that's something we should be helping with, you know, trying to uh, put some science behind. Yep. Um, and in a similar note, I'd like to, to uh, suggest that um, the, the artificial field that the, it's likely to go into the, well, the Doug White field right now is an artificial field. Mm -hmm. It um, probably leaches PFAS among other things. Yeah. And there's some evidence that the well that's probably, well, the nearest well is probably affected by um, PFAS leaching into the groundwater. Um, but that's the water department. Well, my point is that we have a broad range of issues. And if we had a body in the town that would deal with all of them instead of saying I'm in this lane and you're in this lane and I can't deal with this and you know I think we even if it starts out really tiny with a very broad vague uh, mm. mandate yeah. I think it's important to give it a 
well, give it a, a broad mandate to start with and say, look, it's, it's biodiversity, however that may appear, and it will become more clear over time. I mean, there's yeah. no way it's going to start out by going to the townspeople and saying, you can't have mosquito Joe, even though we know that their so-called organic stuff, which is probably permethrins, is, is killing every insect and arachnid yeah. and probably not affecting the mosquitoes they're concerned about because they live in the trees above them. <laughs> and bite them anyway. Um, but there's just a heck of a lot of, um, well, there's a lot that could be done and it's a broad thing. And, you yeah. and know, and I, you know, one thing I would say that our committee has helped with is we've helped uh, CCHS with the pollinator garden they put in at the school. But that's, is when I look at the property over at CCHS and that's pollinator garden, I say, wow, you know, this is like, Two so tiny, tiny compared what to what we could, really do, could there. do. We could do a whole lot more, and it and you know, working together with the educate with the school board and working with the schools uh, could be really productive for pollinators yeah. and for students. If we had a czar, czarina of um, biodiversity, they could make those connections. They could have an overall plan. They could make. They could suggest to different groups to work together. We shouldn't have just a pollinator garden over there. We should have a greenhouse. That's something that's been in the in the works. They've been talking about it since before that school was built. Um, well, there are a bunch of reasons why it hasn't happened yet, but um, and there are a bunch of reasons why it would be useful yeah. it, it, for educational reasons as well. Well, the other thing is we have a you know a middle school going up, and what's the landscaping there, and what's the what are the you know, what, what's going in the ground there and where are the pieces to that? Yeah, that's a good point. We could be working together with them. Right. Step out for a minute, I'll come back. This is a good discussion. So Matt, can you tell me what prompted this? Well, I think anytime that a committee comes forward with a new charge, Mm -hmm. Right. Then it, it just comes back to, well, what, because this would be approved by the select board. Yeah. Um, the, the committee serves, you know, as a select board nominated and appointed committee um, that the, we have actually as a goal on the select board to, uh, you know, streamline the committee structure in town. And so I, I understand having worked with the finance committee for years. Yeah. <laughs> Good, good, so, good goal, Matt. <laughs> yeah, well, and so, you know, when I looked at the proposed new charge, that's kind of the questions that I asked were really around, okay, when, you know, we look at the town boards and committees that we have, what, what, why do we have them? And, you know, typically we have them for, you know, pretty narrow set of reasons. Um, so again, forming policy, regulating, defining, you know, budgets and spending money. Um, these are the kinds of things that that our committees do. And they they need to be town boards or committees because they affect the lives of our citizens, you know, in material ways that that they need the right to be able to attend open meetings, that there need to be quorum, there need to be minutes taken, there need, you know, all of that. There need to be a formal appointment process and I, again, if, when I looked at this charge, I, I did not see that kind of mission, okay. I did see an important mission. And again, it's not like I'm, I'm trying to say this isn't something that we should be doing as people or as a town. It's just that we don't need to do it as a town committee is my, I still believe that. Um, and I do think that there is a germ here of something broader I think as Janet has raised but I don't know that it is yet you know at the level of being able to bring it forward as okay well here's a here's another thing that perhaps we should do as a town border committee. Yeah the thing I would worry about if I I guess it naturally belongs under the natural resources commission well except for that I think as you pointed out rightly it's a, a regulatory body and yeah and that's the problem. It may need association with the natural resources director, you know, because her, you know, uh, mandate is broader than just the commission, right? 
Maybe it should be something more like the sustainability director and really fall under the town manager. And, and, um, but you know, it's, I, it's certainly not going to happen this year or next year. It's something, but I think it's the, I think it's an idea that we might want to flesh out. Yeah. Is one that- of the things that we're working on right now, by the way, is uh, possibly combining the two sustainability related uh, committees in town. The, Climate Action Advisory Board and the uh, Comprehensive Sustainability and Energy Committee. Um, by the way, it's just something that we're doing. Now that we have a new sustainability director, I think we're going to try to centralize all of that under one committee. And- Good idea. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, it'd be great. It'd be so much easier. Yeah, well, I, I was in a group not long ago, we, probably with Alice Kaufman or something like that. We were saying, there's CAB, there's CSEC, there's you know, yeah. all these different groups. It's like, yeah. there's a little redundancy here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, that's, we're working on that. Okay, thank you. So, again, I don't think that we have to make a definitive decision tonight. On the other yeah. hand, you know, I think if you were to bring forward this charge, you you know, this is the the big question that would be asked, I think, at the, at the select board. Okay. Okay. So, so if we, uh, for example, have some proposed regulations. Well, and not just for their own sake, of course. Oh, no, I understand yeah. that. <laughs> well, for, you know? well, I'll give you an example, uh, Matt. Our committee came up with that, what became Article 50, I think. And it was all set to go on the warrant, and it didn't. And then the next year, uh, we wanted to put it on the warrant. And to be frank, the left select board kind of waffled said well we don't know if we want to put it on the warrant this year or not and so i ended up having to put the warrant article on as an individual petition as a citizen and it passed and and fortunately and i was grateful for it the select board supported the article at town meeting yeah which i think is a big key in the fact that it passed so overwhelmingly that regulation was to not allow the town to use to not allow a new lesser of town land to use neonics on the property and uh and quite frankly uh you know when i discussed that with the nrc they were they were kind of well gee you know these people have been farming this for years you know and audit, what happened was the town got two parcels of land because of uh whatever reason i can't say i know one of them had to do with white pond and i think the other one i'm not quite sure it was a was a family that uh turned the land over to the town i think uh, and and I think I think what was motivating our committee when we came up with the idea of new town leases uh, was regardless of how the town got the land, if we were going to be leasing to a new entity, we had to re- we wanted to restrict it because the idea was to phase out the amount of neonics being applied on town land that was being leased. You know, for example, I think the land, around Ripley is farmed. And I uh, I know it's not an organic farm. And so therefore that's got, you know, neonics in it uh, at roughly the level of 50 parts per billion in the soil, I would guess. Uh, and so it's, it's uh, I guess what I'm thinking is that if we had been a, if we weren't a town committee, right. accomplishing that might've been harder. Or maybe not even possible. Yeah, but I mean, I guess the question I have is, you know, now that that has passed, is that job done? No, no, no. I mean, absolutely we've passed, not. We've, you know, the the neonic problem in the town is this big, and that thing was that much. Seriously, mm-hmm. I mean, yeah. uh, the number of acres compared for just to the just to the size of the Nashada Golf Course, for example. The Shawnee is about 120 or 160 acres. I forget the exact number. And at the rate, there is four times the rate of those parcels of farmland. And those two parcels are nowhere near 160 acres. So I'm guessing, I think the one over by White Pond is about 10 acres. And I think the other piece is about the same size. And it's being applied on those rate. Those properties would have been applied at one quarter the rate of Neshawnee, just as an example. So I, I guess I get, I'm back to... 
you know, do you no. contemplate other regulations, especially in light of the state regulations being in place? Right. It's the, the, the state regulations that still have a lot of latitude in them. The only thing based, the biggest thing is not to have it supposedly on, on the store, you know, the local hardware shelf for the average person to grab and go. But yeah. the training is, when I read, and it was a while ago in the fall that I read through everything, um, the training is, you know, the, they're supposed to be trained people and all the rest, but it's one of these things where if I get trained and I can train Christine and she can train you and you can train there from what I could read. Now I might be incorrect or they may have be enacting it in a different way, but it sounded like the average landscaper could come out and do your lawn or whatever with no, basically they'd have, you know, been on a list of people that were trained. The original person we had had some training with a particular group and I'm not sure that I can remember all of that, but it gets to me very watered down very quickly. And I, I, I mean, I, I think that, and I'm new to the group and I've learned a lot because I'm not a specialist. I'm just, a, a, you know, a citizen who's gotten interested in native, native plants and some other related things. And yet this to me is very, very big. And I think what, um, when Janet talks about the biodiversity collapse, I mean, that's the piece you stop to see when you look at the, it's not just the bee, it's what's the bee, bee eating or drinking and raising its young. What happens to that plant when it falls back into the ground? And that apparently is one of the biggest ways the neonics are yeah, put in the ground or, or given to the plant in some way. And then when that plant dies and goes back into the ground and is, you know, like whatever, incorporated into the soil, that apparently is lasting a very long time. Like I said, I'm not a scientist. I don't understand all the pieces, but it does sound very dire in terms of what's in the what what's lays ahead for future. Well, um, we've we normally run for an hour. And, <laughs> oh, and. Well. And we've uh, we've accomplished well. We've started the first item on the old business list. Um, can we can we continue? Uh, yeah, this can continue. Yeah. I just yeah, wanted, you don't we don't need yeah. to decide this tonight. No. But I think Matt, you raised some very good points, yeah. and this is very worthwhile for us to consider in terms of this charge. Um, looking at the charge without the background section, was there any other? Uh, issues and it other than the lack of purpose. <laughs> job. That's probably not the right way to say it. No, it's not the right way to say it. It is, a, I, is a purpose. Always, yeah, right. Other than maybe re refining and, and tuning up the purpose to meet some of Matt's or maybe all of Matt's objections or thoughts. Uh, are there any other issues? Um, for example, we talked about a three year term. I think. Uh, does that seem reasonable to people or should we go for a two-year term? I think one year, the problem is there's not enough time to really get yourself up to speed. No, three years is correct. That's that, that's Good. We either have three-year terms or five-year terms and five-year terms are usually single, whereas three years are renewable. Yeah, I think three is good too. because yeah. I've been at this for way more than three years and I'm still learning. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I'm, and I don't the slow, uh, slow learner. Yeah, Janet. I'd like to suggest that um, Matt go back from this meeting and tell the select board that we're, we're not opposed to becoming um, a non-town group, but that the mission is important. And perhaps the select board should consider, oh, can you hear me? Because my, yeah. my clock is yeah. bonging, I'm sorry. Um, maybe the select board should, um, if they consider the issue of biodiversity to be important, and you know most people would consider it to be as important as climate change, then um, perhaps they could find a way, a, 
a, a place for the same mission to be accomplished in a in a more formal manner. Yeah. Because we okay. are a Let tiny little group concerned with pollinators. It's like one teeny little aspect. Yeah. And the yeah. deer I was talking about, it's another little teeny aspect. There needs to be somebody who can coordinate all these. And it yeah. is too if you want to defang us by by making us a, a citizens group, it really it it devalues the the concerns of the group. And the, the concern should be even bigger than our group. So yeah, I would throw the it, motivation here. <laughs> well, okay, I, I said it wrong, but yeah. I would I would say go back to the select board, tell them that it's, you know, we all agree this is important stuff, and we're only dealing with one teensy little bit. It's all fragmented. And can they find a way to give some weight and credence to the to the mission? And where should it sit? If right. not, well, I can give some voice to but right now. There does appear to be a gap in the the NRC doesn't actually deal with this and um, ag committee has a very, you know, specific agenda for agricultural land. So yeah, there, yeah. there really isn't an entity that is looking at those issues. Um, yeah. yeah. A, a, lot of these, a lot of these pesticides and chemicals are, are public health issues as well. Right. Know? Well, it was never an issue until just the post-World War period. It's really within our lifetimes that this has yeah. all become a big yeah. deal. Yeah. And it's, we're only now becoming aware of how, how crucial it is. Everything used to be organic as a matter of course. That's right. right. <laughs> yeah. So is, in the rest of the uh, charge, or yeah, the rest of this draft charge, was there any, it sounds like the rest of it's decent, I'll put it that way. Uh, and so just reworking the purpose is probably what we need to do and then get back to you, Matt. Yeah, I mean, when you look at the duties or responsibilities, I think, you know, it clearly has to fall out as part of that purpose, right? Yeah. yeah. And, yeah. Um, you know, I, again, I look at those and I'm, um, I, I, I see those as background tasks that could support any kind of entity working on these things. Yeah. Yeah. One, one thing I will say is that in my discussions with the folks in the Sewasco watershed and, and uh, the Massachusetts Pollinator Network, um, they're really impressed by Concord uh, in the fact that we've had uh, two articles on the warrant having to do with this uh, and that we did pass Article 50. They're, they're inspired by that and they want to copy that. So in that sense, I think, well, this is, well, we're still having, we're still learning a lot. I'll put it that way, everybody in this field uh, i know that i know I that we're doing a good job yeah i know that lincoln though is like moving much further along with agri as well as, as their uh, conservation land to be far more um organic than what mm -hmm. we're doing yes and i think we need to work that we need to work that with with uh, concord land conservation trust you know that, that but um okay so uh on the annual report, is it okay if we move on? Yeah. Okay. On the annual report, um, I I don't I think I may have sent stuff out to you folks on that. Uh, Thank you. Too. We, I don't, I don't we, think you did, Mark. Okay. I I promise to do that after this meeting. Uh, we need to do a little bit of writing to get something ready fairly quickly, actually. Um, Isabel, do you want to say anything about the January? So I'm doing a, a workshop on sowing native plants at Barrel Farms on the 22nd. We already have a waiting list. We have 40 people and we have a waiting list of, I don't know how many at this point. Great. Um, and uh, uh, that the, the library is registering everybody. So if you want, want to get on the wait list, land trusts wanted uh, five slots. So I've got, given them five slots, but a nice. deadline. Uh, to free it up for the for the wait list and they're all uh, all except for two people um, are all new uh, to to me as a native uh, reader sorry about the new noise in the back my husband's got the tv going um, <laughs> well, we can hear you okay that's great thanks um and i'm other... coordinating that with northboro um and okay. uh, Tufts Pollinator Network. Good, uh, good, good, okay. 
Um, okay, the native pollinator plants, the, this funding issue, um, we have, we, we did get, the only funds I know that we've already got are uh, based on a grant that the Concord Garden Club gave us at the beginning of COVID that Isabel and I've talked about. That those those funds were banked with the uh, Division of Natural Resources with Delia um, as two hundred and fifty dollars, uh, and we this might be a good year to um, since COVID is abating despite my best efforts. Uh, <laughs> a good time to do something about that. But also, I think what I am seeing is that these pollinator initiatives, for example, were the town to undertake pollinator issues pollinator support on more town land. Uh, we may want to consider some funding to help the, the transition of that land use. And, so uh, Delia has applied to the Concord Garden Club for um, uh, plugs, um, five, a uh, thousand plugs offered to transplant them. And she plans to give them away at uh, um, Earth Day. I don't know if they she got funded or not, but um, she's not allowed to sell them because it's very complicated being a town uh, department. So she was going to give the 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 plants away. Um, and I'm uh, waiting for her to get her assistant before I start, you know, after her about that. Because she's just, I mean, Will was on maternity leave and she she was it. That I mean, she's been it for weeks now. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Okay. That I might say that Lincoln had had a, a land manager forever, um, and that the fact that we even just now are getting a land is a great um, step forward. Yeah. Good. Good. <coughs> um, was that land that land master? Was that uh, ja Jane? Did, was she no, the, the land, land manager is Will Holden, and he's he hasn't well, been with the department for a year yet. Yeah, I mean, and there was not somebody before. I mean, oh, the okay. town is very much lagging in in funding, even though my bill tax bill came through like unbelievable as this week. Yep. Oh boy. Okay, so um, <clears throat> are there any any new business? Okay. Any last minute? Uh, I had one uh, point I wanted to make, which was I just was looking over the Natural Resources Commission charge, which is on the yes. town website. And it is actually quite a bit broader than my experience of the NRC is. <laughs> okay. Um, and so it may be that, you know, there's something there that we can kind of tap into. Okay. Um, so just I think it's check. a personnel problem. I don't think it, it's... May, it may be more of how the commission sees itself than how it's actually charged to operate. Okay. So if you look at it, it, it includes, um, uh, where is it? Uh, insect and plant disease control. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, that's... And so do you think uh, we should be a subcommittee for them? Well, or... it, it would seem like a, well, for example, a biodiversity subcommittee would make a heck of a lot of sense. It seems very aligned with the duties and responsibilities. Mm -hmm. So just as an example, it's just yeah. something to, to consider moving forward is, um, is a way to organize this. Yep. Yeah. How, how can we help that along? Well, I think, you know, going back to this charge and, and pointing out relative to the charge, how uh, something could be structured, you know. Is that um, your your thing to do or? Well, it could be, but I, I think having um, some help here would be great. Great, um, Matt. Who? Who and what? And well, when? I mean, I think the members of this committee are highly motivated, you know. So yeah. if you if you look at, again, if you think about okay, how how could this fit in with this existing structure, such as the Natural Resources Commission, and maybe help 
the Natural Resources Commission fulfill its charge that it may not be completely fulfilling at this point. Okay. That that's what I'm really getting at. Yeah. Oh, that, well, that sounds really good, but I I bet somebody. I mean, the very the first sentence is it's responsible for the overall stewardship of the natural resources of the town. Yeah. Okay. Well, and, they are, and they're going to push back resources, unless they get some more money. It it, it means it includes, but is not limited to the town-owned lakes, ponds, streams, parks, conservation land, forests, watersheds, farmland, etc. Yeah, if you're pretty... not specifically otherwise committed to other town jurisdiction. Does it say forest? Did you say? Yeah, it does. Okay. And then insect and plant disease control, public shade and ornamental trees and shrubs, conservation land use, forest management, and general environmental issues, including groundwater, flood control, and farmland preservation, the prevention of air and water pollution, et cetera. Hmm. Is there anything it doesn't cover? <laughs> yeah. And one person, one person is supposed to do that. Well, uh, yeah. So, you know, it gets back to, well, if there was a, a very, you know, again, the Natural Resources Commission is, uh, what, five people. Yeah. Then, and they are probably got their hands full just simply with the, you know, the order of conditions types of applications that they get before them every week practically yeah. but then you it does say you know that um establish policies for the management and use of property um you know develop and revise the open space plan um that uh policy guidance and adopt regulations governing natural resources programs and activities it's uh you know so we could we could become a real thorn in their side well i, I <laughs> no I'm no no an assist thorn. we're going to help thinking about uh, yeah no, we could do a lot to help Another yeah. set mark of, i think uh, i really take, i take i take exemption from that because i oh, think I'm, they I'm really just, they they want to do right they can't they just don't have the time they or the personnel the, right have, but that's the thing is like is there a way to make it so it's helpful you know so yeah. anyway, I, I that's now this charge was written in 1982. Yeah. Okay. So when I was graduating from college, so um, it's been out there for a while. <laughs> uh, that's that's interesting. That's a. So it sounds like we ago. should look at their charge and write our charge to match theirs, and then make a note. Uh, no. Well, just to think about what aspects does the NRC not address today that it was intended to, and could you create a subcommittee or something that would fulfill those gaps, you know, and anyway, it's yeah. just a thought. We, we could either be a subcommittee or, or that might be become part of our charge, I mean, as our own committee. Yeah, or something work, to work with them there is there is a lot of i have felt that there are parallels between us and what i would think they would be doing yeah yeah well it's the funny thing is that what i read this and what i think that they're doing versus what you then look at their agendas and see what they're doing and yeah you know, like two different things yeah Way different. Way yeah it's it's uh it's interesting well this is good um thank you matt i'm so glad that we were able to meet together with you and work on this. And um, why don't we plan to get this together in the next, you know, this next month and get it, get to you a draft copy of what we're thinking about for okay. sure. as ourselves as a committee or as a subcommittee or whatever I, we can. Yeah. I mean, it looks like they do. You know, we've talked about the Haywood Meadow. There is that Haywood Commit Meadow Stewardship Committee is listed yeah. here stands on it as yeah. the warrior's <laughs> pond which i'm not aware of having met but yeah uh, yeah i know those people and there's also the trails committee the wildlife passage task force what the heck i never heard of that one what does it do i don't know it's on the list here i think it's probably you know defunct but that's yeah. probably like the um you know the tunnels under route two it is it is indeed that's what it is about yeah, yeah. Hmm. 
2009. Mm -hmm. so. Okay, so, so our next meeting, I, so I move that we table the yep. the present, and um, who's going who's going to work on revision based on this discussion? Ah, that's a good question. I'm willing to help out. Anybody else want to work on it? I can well, help. Okay. Well, but what's the aim? If the aim is, I mean, we're dealing with one little facet of biodiversity here. Right. But I think I think the aim would be, first of all, let's read what the NRC's charge. Mm -hmm. Let's think about how we might be able to help them, either as a subcommittee or as our, our own committee and read and recast our charge in a way that that um, is compatible. Oh, uh, who is our representative from the Natural Resources Commission? Ah, what do you that, mean? Well, in, in you're this, supposed to have in, one. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, in this, there's supposed to be an ag committee, a natural resources person, an entomologist, yes. and a beekeeping, and three citizens at large. I don't know. The closest we probably get. Is Stan? <laughs> Not really. Not really. Well, so <laughs> no, I, I've been sitting here intensely quiet, kind of listening, and I just like to put one thought on the table before we finish. Our charge is is quite narrow and very specific, and I think if we uh, start branching out into other kind of areas, that are really the responsibility of some of the existing committees. That's a big mistake. I think mm -hmm. the key thing for us is on our charge that we have the mechanism to get our concerns or actions required into the other committees that have the direct responsibility of taking care of it. I think if we start doing stuff that the natural resource people should be doing, that's a mistake. I mean, if you look at the title of our committee, it's very specific. But it, although it's very specific, it impacts a lot of areas that are the responsibility of these other committees that should be taking care of it as long as it's identified to them. And I think our charge is to, to identify the items, make sure they're being plugged into the right committee, and helping where we can uh, and making sure that they're taking action. Don't let them ignore the, the point. So I think if you start hauling stuff that's into our committee, that's the responsibility of the others, it's a big mistake. But I think we, we, we need to keep our charge pretty tight and focused on the area that we were charged with looking at. Mm -hmm. pollinator issues. But if we became a subset of the NRC, we could continue with this narrow focus, but we could push our suggestions up to the NRC, which might have more yeah, uh, but I think more that pull we want for to, getting them accomplished. And it would serve them. the purpose that Matt wants, Matt, the, uh, yeah. the select board wants to streamline things. Yeah, but I, I think if we're only pushing to the natural resource Commission, that's a mistake. I think we, yes. we should be pushing it directly to the other parts of the organization that are charged with making sure that actions are taken. Okay, fair enough. Yeah. A very good so point. I think we need to be sure if we look at our charge that we're, you know, we know precisely what we're supposed to be covering, but then the links to the other parts of the town organization that should be taking care of making sure the actions are handled, are taken care of. So you're not making a bigger organization, you're just making sure that we are doing what we should be doing and that the other existing parts of the town organization are taking care of what they should be taking care of. And, uh, we can keep identifying these issues up to them. But I, I think it's a, we shouldn't broaden our charge out so, such that we are kind of impacting or, or take, trying to, not trying to take, but uh, kind of, yeah, maybe it is taking part of 
the responsibility for what, what the other organization should be doing. Yeah. Uh, I think that's good. I, I remember when we were early on in this, uh, uh, I met with the, uh, with the Ag Committee a few times. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, those meetings uh, were good. Yeah. yeah. They didn't necessarily buy everything I was saying, but they, yeah. nonetheless, you know, we can present a consistent view. Uh, yeah. Of, this is not an easy- I do think that, you know, that we need to do it as a committee more so that we're yeah. all part of, of it. Yes. Not just you by yourself meeting with Steve, but right. we as a committee, yeah. Um, all being really informed. Um, well, yeah, and I think that's it. I think it's good, for example, that Steve's on our committee because there he's getting our, you know, during our meetings, he's getting what, what we're up to, which is good. And his comment about the charge about, you know, who's putting down the neonics is, is very apropos. Yeah. Well, this is good. Um, I apologize. I mean, sorry, I have to go apologize. Yeah. I've got family here, so um, we should wrap up. So this is okay. Bye bye. Thanks, bye, Isabel. Isabel. Thanks, Thanks for being here. Well, thank you all. Anybody want to adjourn? I make a motion. The chair, you can just say we're done with the agenda. Okay. Thank you thank all. You. Thanks, Thanks, Matt. Everybody. Right. Thanks, Thanks, Matt. Thanks, Matt. Great, for Thanks, great yeah. discussion. Great discussion. Yeah, Thanks. Great discussion. Thank you all.